What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Comeback Couples Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jennison, with Kendra Jennison. And you got some, you got Kevin over there raising the cameras. You can't see him, but he's raising cameras. You get, you like that. With my angles. Yeah. Ankles? Cankles. (laughs) You got cankles. No, I don't. (laughs) Listen, I have a lot to talk about. So I don't really know if there's an actual direction. The direction today is life. Well, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> that's pretty much what it is every day. Mm. But let's just talk about where we've been and what's been going on. So I feel like we do this call, or not this call, this topic. Often? Off, well, not often, a couple times a year, like leveling up mm-hmm. and resistance and hitting. Painful, like just moments of our life. And I actually feel like, as I say that, I'm like, dude, you're such a f- wimp, like painful, like how painful is it? But it's, the, the reality is like, it, it gets tiring. It gets exhausting. So what are we talking about, right? Like here we are in our life right now in a, in a place where as much as things are trying to expand, it feels like as they're expanding, things are contracting, Sure. right? So like we're looking to level up and we're finally crystal clear on something that we want and what we're going, we're lockstep, it is what it is. It was off my goals, I have to put on my goals. So now I've gotta, I've gotta turn the ship to get back on track so I can go get what it is that you want so we can nail this thing down. I've got a time crunch because I, only by me, yep. only pressure by me that I wanna put on because I wanna get it under a certain amount of time and things I'm trying to get. But it's not even about that, that subject of our life. I'm talking about in general as our life because we are trying to level up as human beings from an energetic and spiritual place in such a massive way that I feel like as we're running and running and running and I'm out doing what I need to do for the comeback and trying to make these course corrections and learning and training and building and even at home, just like we get hit. I don't really know, I get hit. And I feel like as a, as the man, like I'm going to take it. Like there's one common theme inside of my life right now that I'm noticing that the harder I go, the further I try to climb, the darker it gets, which makes no sense because I'm trying to climb towards a light, towards a dream, towards a vision, towards what God called me to do. But if I get up and I go up and I go up, it gets darker and it gets darker and it gets darker. I don't necessarily think that's fair to say that it gets darker and darker. I think it's just uncharted territory. You're swimming and it's dark and you're not exactly sure where the land is, you know, so it's heavy. I know that leveling up is always heavy. There's always boom, boom, you're getting hit. We are getting hit from different directions all the time. Seemingly right when we're always about to level up and doing things in big ways. Maybe four or five years ago when this would have happened to us, we would have been totally in a tailspin what the heck is going on? Oh my gosh, this is happening now. This is happening. And you even said it this morning when we were talking over coffee. No, I, I've already been here before. Right. I've already been here before. So in a, in a weird way, and this is why I can say, this is how I know we're leveling up. One, because we're making the moves too. We're making adjustments. We're really crystal clear on what we're going after. And again, you always get hit with it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so... And on the other side of it, once we clear it out, there it is, next level. Why do you think it's important to go to the next level? Like why, like, yeah. I, I think I've ever actually asked you that. Like why do we actually continuously try to strive for more? I guess everybody will have their different answers. I'm only worried about us on this call. I know, I know. For us, growth and right rising to an occasion and, and expanding in every way possible has been has been the greatest has probably been the most exciting and greatest component in our relationship it happens really quickly <laughs> you know we just said it the other night when we were out for dinner um, how quickly and how and how how easy it is for me to take for granted not consciously not that i'm doing it on purpose but to not reflect as much and say, holy smokes, I was just here. And now, you know, sometimes only six months, three months later, and now I'm here, you know, and not, and not, uh, again, just kind of taking it for granted. But, but for us, 
we're really unique individuals in the sense that we pride ourselves on trying to make things harder and overcoming it. And, oh, this is really exciting. This is the next level. Who do we get to become? What does that look like? We find a lot of pride and joy in that. I love watching you figure the next level of you out. It excites me. It makes me so proud of you. It, when you're working on yourself in the business and doing things to make you feel good, I'm doing the same and it makes me feel good. And together we're just this powerhouse of rising and supporting. And that's just a really incredible place to be. And that's, and I, I've said it a few times now, it's my favorite part of our marriage is continuously finding ways to grow and to develop. And, and then the flip side of that, I've had a few conversations with you because I'm, I'm more... I'm a really at peace in certain areas of my life where I'm like, no, like I am so happy. I'm good. I don't want to, I don't need to, I don't have this desire to achieve this next level of this, this, and this, because I'm, I'm really good with this right now. You know, it feels good. I'm happy. I have X, Y, and Z. It's, everything is lined up for me, Mark. Like this is wonderful. And, and I get worried for you. And I've said it before that you are on such a different level when it comes to self-development and business and more and greater that I think I've said it to you a few times, when is it when is it ever enough? When is it enough? And you've said to me, well, it's never gonna be enough because as long as I'm breathing and as long as I can do more, I'm always gonna do more. Sure. That's just how you're built. And I love that for you. And I'll never tell you to not be that. You know, I've never, but I, I, I often at nighttime or in the mornings when I'm just watching you working and you're exhausted yourself and your eyes are heavy. And you can tell even on camera probably the moments where things are really heavy for you because you wear it on your face and you wear it. Yesterday your, was one of those days. It was. And you wear it in your body language. And I just, um, and rightfully so, right? There's, there's a lot of things right now that we're, we're ironing out for lack of a better term. But getting to a spot for you where you can really sit and, and say, dang, I'm good now. I did it. You know, um, I wish that for you in, in some, for to have that peace and to have that ah, So it's funny, <clears throat> you say, and I say that I'm after peace. Freedom, I know. But I talk about wanting to have all this peace and this freedom inside of my life, but mm -hmm. every time I get peace and freedom inside of my life, I actually just look for ways to create more, more war, war and more, yep. war and more. So it's not actually, I don't even know, I wrote down on my notes yesterday, I'm like, am I just lying to myself? I don't know if you saw that on the paper or not, but like, I'm just like, am I just lying to myself? And like, what I mean by that is, I'm just figuring out ways to go hunt and hurt and fight and build. And I know why I'm doing it, but I'm saying I want peace, mm -hmm. but all I'm really doing is becoming more well-equipped for war. I think, I think knowing that about yourself too is massive. I mean, you're going to be 40, how old are you going to be? 44, three? 44. 44 in June. 44, okay, maybe not, maybe 34 years of your life, you have, you've, you've, you've waged war, you know, in some way, shape, or form, you've waged war. So the pattern, to try and break a 34-year pattern of you not waging war, and you like it. I think that's another important thing, too, is you like waking up every day, having a purpose, putting on your armor and, and crushing and solving problems. And you love that. It makes you you, you know, and to, and to say that you're going to hit a spot and you're going to be peaceful and calm. And I don't necessarily think that. Right. I just mean in a sense where you can you can wage you can wage different wars, maybe I guess is a, is a better word for it. Cause I don't, again, I don't think you're ever gonna be that man that wakes up and is all Zen and ah, oh, yes, my life is perfect now and whatever. I, I, I always, I think that it's something intrinsic inside of any man such as yourself that you wanna wage war, you wanna fight, you wanna battle because you wanna conquer, right? I think that's wonderful, but I do, I do worry, get to a spot where the more, the more, the more, the more, the higher, the harder, the whatever. Where what, what's the word? Eleutheromania. Eleutheromania. You, eleutheromania. Yep. You know that word, Kevin? Eleutheromania. It's it, it's a Greek word, mm -hmm. and it's basically obsessed with freedom and moving, 
and moving. Mm -hmm. And when I sat, when I attach for me, <clears throat> my obsession with freedom is always through fighting, sure. never through peace. But I tell myself every day I'm looking for peace. Yet yeah. none of my Maybe actions. That's not the right word. None of my actions are ever designed for peace. Mm -hmm. And we had a. So I brought that up today because we were talking last night. We went out and. Actually, I back up. It was Monday, sitting in that very chair, and me sitting right here. I did a did a call with Pastor Josh, or we came in and we talked about the six primal identities of a man, and the first one was the your creator. Yep. And obviously, I'm a creator in many things, but he talked about creating the atmosphere, mm -hmm. right? So inside of your home, creating the atmosphere, you know, creating presence and being these things. We use like we use like little, not little. I guess it's a big deal, like social media, as a you know, you could be sitting there playing a game or scrolling the endless scroll and not being present. Like there's that atmosphere yeah. you're building. But what I'm talking about is inside of a creator was last night we were going for Taco Tuesday, right? I, I felt your energy, your mindset, your heart, mm -hmm. your soul was down. Yeah, it was super It's probably down. the lowest I'd ever felt it. And that's interesting that you bring that up because you yesterday were in a super, super low, burn it to the ground, fuck it, I'm done with I'm a comeback, I don't want to do it anymore, this is like, I'm, I'm done with it. Like, you were ready to throw in the towel. I felt that energy from you. And it's interesting because I, when we were at dinner and I was talking about it, I said, I know that as your wife, what you need from me is in those moments of defeat for you when you're just super down and super fucking low. The, the, the last thing that I should be doing is matching that energy and matching that level with you. Um, and I know that. I felt it. But I just, for whatever reason, there was no shaking it. You were picking everything apart. So then I started to pick everything apart and I'm venting to you and you're venting to me. And I, we were at dinner and I says, holy smokes, this is just, this is a lot. This is heavy for us. And And you told me, you're like, even though I'm really low in these moments. Your job as my wife is to not match that energy. I need you to be the happy Kendra, positive wife that you are. Because otherwise, when you're also like this, then what the fuck am I doing any of this for, right? It was just we were we were it we were at that spot, and I agreed with you, and I said it's just. And I, I think I said we're just so connected on such a spiritual, physical, mental level that even consciously I knew that I was low, I couldn't reverberate up to the frequency that I needed to be for you. I, I, it sounds crazy. I just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. No, I can tell. And what's, and what's important. It was, that, it was as if you were just wearing my exhaustion on your, like. And I went to a place of, okay, he's exhausted. He wants to burn to the ground. I mean, the words you use was, you're useless. Yeah, I felt I felt so useless and I couldn't help you. I couldn't there was nothing I could do in the business. There was nothing I could do to lift your mood. There was nothing there was nothing that I could do. So I went into what do you need me to do? I need to fix this. I need to do something. Give me something. What can I do? And you you said nothing. There's nothing you could do except for just be happy and I was like, I can't fucking do that because <laughs> there's a problem here. I need to solve it. I need to fix it for you because, you know, it was just a really interesting place to be in. What I think is even more interesting is I think that before before we go to that point, that's a great thing. I just did a call of that <clears throat> a call on that. Like for people listen who feel that way, for the guys or the girls, and you even sent me a video on this. You can't solve a there's, there's external things you can do, but you can't solve an internal problem with external shit. So right. Kevin can't solve my problem. You can't solve my problem. There's there's, there's think going to the gym. There's things that can put band aids on it, but the problem inside it was me was I was I was off inside of my soul and I was feeling wrong. And I still kind of feel that way today. Like I'm tired still, like yeah. worse than I was yesterday or about the same as I was yesterday. Just not as like heavy in my head. Mm -hmm. But what I realize is that the atmosphere that I was creating, the amount of energy and intensity I take can either lead or destroy. Absolutely. And not just you, it's you, it's the kids because mm -hmm. then they're walking on eggshells. It's probably Kevin over here, part of the team. They don't know what's going on. I'm fucking freaking out. And it's like, I want to be a creator and I want to build this thing, but I don't want my world to hurt everybody that I love. Yeah. And and inside, when you're, for me anyways, I get up every day and I said it gets darker and darker and darker. I'm telling you right now, some people be like, what's he talking about? It's dark and war. And it's, it's, it's heavy to do what we do. I think anybody who's 
built a, a coaching business specifically, who's built a coaching business and has dealt with many, many men, many women's emotional, their struggles, their problems, and you take that on and you, f you coach them through it, you fix it. That's energy. That, that's heavy for anybody. And especially when you're trying to be the number one alcohol business in the world, that doesn't come without darkness and war. And anybody who would venture to say otherwise, I, I would love to have a conversation and their perspective on that because I would venture to say it's different. Yeah. I look, I look, going back to why do I continuously want to level up? Because like, I know why. Because there's a feeling that I'm after every day. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more exciting than watching you be free. Watching the kids be free. Watching Kevin be free. Watching mm -hmm. the clients become free. I attached so much, just I'm watching this thing get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I feel sometimes like I'm at the tip of a, of a spear, right? And I'm like this point and I just have to keep fucking going up and up and up and up and up and up and up into these uncharted territories. And sometimes I don't know if I'm good enough. Sometimes I don't know if I'm going to make it sometimes like, and it just, but it never, never ends, but I just won't quit. Yeah. Because it's not just about a business. It's about creating something that's going to, last forever right and i think it's important to to note for the husbands and wives that listen to the podcast is there is no i am a comeback is our life every single day through and through we don't have we have not created and i it doesn't exist for us and and i think it's important to say there isn't there isn't oh mark goes to work and then he comes home and now he's on dad mode there isn't, you don't, we don't turn off the I am a comeback business as soon as you walk through the house door. You know what I mean? It's, it's all the time. And so you feeling that heavy energy, are you feeling moments of defeat? We, we feel it, we feel all of it all the time. And I, I, I think that's important to note because I think it allows you the flexibility and the freedom and you can just talk openly with, about it with me, with the team, with whoever, because, because we already know that it's, it, it's, it's our life. You know, I, I guess I don't know how to articulate exactly that. Cause some people will go to work and that's, and that's work. And then they're able to close the work door at the end of the day. And then they come home and then that's okay. Now I have to deal with this. Um, we don't have that. So I, I love, and I is love, that something you would want? no, I mean, I don't know. I can't say yes or no. It, it's indifferent to me because that's my life is not that anyways. So I've learned to just do what we know, which is 24 seven. I'm a comeback. Majority of our conversations are how to fix, make better, um, make stronger, you know, and knowing that and having that allow in allowing you the freedom to vent to me. Or like I said, yesterday, you wanted to burn it all down to the ground and you were frustrated and you were pissed and you keeping me informed allows me, well, one, to try and make you feel better. <laughs> Yesterday sure. it didn't work. But um, it, it, just, it just leaves that space of, I know what we're doing. I know what we're creating. I know that it's going to get heavy. I know I don't have to take it personal when you're in a grumpy mood or frustrated with something. How can we come together collectively and fix it? You know, And I think sometimes maybe husbands or wives, whoever's in a position, they try to leave it at the door like the business door, close it, I'll deal with it whenever, which is one way, but for us. So for me, I feel like doing that, I would be hiding. Yeah, and so and so then well, that was kind of my point, I think, is maybe you're not able to turn it off because it's not something that's supposed to be turned off. Bring it home, allow your wife or your spouse or your significant other who is on your team to feel that pain with you, to feel the struggles that you're going to, through, to, to have that communication through it because – that's what they're there for is to, is to help you through it, to know that, okay, wow, this is what he's dealing with. This is heavy. This is hard. How can I be the, his person, his peace to make him feel or to help him get through it or to help her get through it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 for, I, I had a reason why I was going to say that, but I guess that's kind of irrelevant now. But I wanted to make, I wanted to make that clear for some people because 
you know, as you wear your heaviness or, um, I, I personally like that. Not that I don't like when things are heavy for you, but I like that you can just be so raw and vulnerable you all wish, the time. Do you wish I did something different? With I'm a comeback? Just me. Like, then have, forget I'm a comeback. Like, yeah, would sometimes. Our, would our life be better, different, smoother, happier? Like, in the <clears> sense of when I watch you and I see you drained in days where you are so physically and mentally and emotionally exhausted. Yes, there are so many days where I wish that you could have just picked a different coaching business because I care about your health and your well-being. But on days when you're on fire and you're feeling good or even when you're feeling good and things suck for I Am A Comeback or you're just frustrated, I still couldn't imagine um, a higher purpose for our life. It's it's a battle that I love to fight with you, um, obviously, because it's near and dear to my heart. It's near mm -hmm. and dear to yours. I feel it's super, super purpose-driven. I love it. It makes me really proud. But yes, there are days <laughs> where I'm just like, God damn it. All the, all the knowledge and money that you spent on something, I'm like, maybe you could just try this too. Because it, it's hard watching somebody you love struggle as much as I've seen you struggle. It sucks. It does. But at the end of the day, you know, sometimes it makes me even more proud when you're, because I know what's going to come on the opposite side of this in just a couple days, maybe a month or so, maybe a little longer, but. I wonder if, if it would be any different if I did anything different. Like how much of it is actual what we build, what we do, or how much of it is me? Yeah, what I do know about you is you have that Michael Jordan mentality and I don't know, some of these other really incredible driven athletes is you, you, you sell yourself on stories, right? In your head, you make things so much more intense and harder than sometimes they need to be because that's what you need to overcome something. I know that about you. I remember sometimes we're walking and you're telling me how you are perceiving what's going on in the world right now. And I have, and I, I sit back and I listen and I, that's a really interesting way to to put that because I know you have to tell yourself that story so that way you can wage war so that way you can fucking go. Yeah. And for me, I, I'm just over here, well, this is how I see it and well, maybe that's why I'm frolicking and you're, you know, <laughs> you're getting shit done. But I, I do know you have that mentality. I think a lot of, I don't know what, it, I, maybe there's a specific name for it, but you sell yourself on a story of making things harder, making things more difficult, making things more intense. I mean, if I look at everything that I've done so far, I mean, I, I know that we've done some stuff, but I don't think I've done anything. No. And I know you tell yourself that but all I, the time I, too. I truly, I, I believe that. I do know this. But I also, so like there's a difference between believing and knowing. Yeah. Right? That's like, a place where we're at right now too. Right? Yeah. yeah, 100%, right? Like I, I believe lots of things, I, but I believe I didn't do it, but I know that I did, yet this like, I, I could make it like, about my faith. Like I, I believe that there's a difference between believing I have faith and knowing I have faith. Sure. And I know that like I'm spiritually led and everything. I know it. Like mm -hmm. there's no other answer for it, which even though it's heavy, nothing else matters as long as I go this way. Like I know what I'm supposed to do. I yep. know where we're going. I'm locked in. I know what's supposed to happen. When I look at everything inside of my life, I'm like, I knew like, I don't feel like I've done anything. Yet I come home today, I'm exhausted. I worked, <laughs> I worked hard. I left it all on the table. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. And then there's other times I look at what I've done and I'm like, dang, it's pretty neat. Like I've been able to, sp I've been able to help a lot of people. And just so we're clear, you have, you have more moments of I'm not doing shit than moments of, wow, I did, I'm really, I'm really putting a dent in the world. Right? Yeah, I'm upset. <clears throat> That's why I brought that up. Like, would you like it if I did something different? Because. Number one, I won't ever go do anything different, but I wondered what I would be capable of if I did something that didn't have such a darkness attached to it. Yeah, and that's like, just the reality of our life and the business that we choose to um, pursue in this world. I'm a comeback is we deal with some of the hardest, darkest traumas that people are trying to overcome. And you are their light, essentially. They come to you a person who has been to hell and back and they're looking to you for that light, for that guidance and 
that doesn't come mm-hmm. without all the darkness, all the heavy, all that energy, all that. It, it's tough. It is so, so tough. I ask these guys, or I ask Chris all the time, I'm like, man, people even want what I have to offer. I mean, obviously there's proof and evidence that there is, but like yeah. at the end of the day, does the world just want to be weak? Right. And am I trying to fight so much weakness through so much darkness that nobody really wants it? Then you look at like social media, which is a bad indicator of mm-hmm. what's going mm-hmm. on. But here I am just for years putting message out and then they like can suppress the message or we struggle to get the message out or like the social media doesn't hit. And I granted, I don't do a ton on it, but like, I'm like, well, if it's something that's such a powerful message that people want to hear, why is it so small? And then it creates this frustration when we're not doing shit, Mm -hmm. you're not doing enough. You've only helped X amount of people, right? These people are great. Why are they not evangelists of it? Why are they not out saying it's so great? Why have not each person went and told somebody about this thing who sent somebody here to, to like make this thing compound? And I look back at the timeline of what I've been able to do since 2019 to 2024, and I see what AA's done, AA did to use as a, as a, I guess, a benchmark, and far more people right. I've helped in, wow. in the time. Granted, we've got different tools and technology. Now, over time, compounding from like whatever year it was, 1939 or 34, whatever, to 2024, that snowball effect is so much more massive right. than anything I've done right now. But if I look at it from a timeline, sometimes I'm so far away from what it is that I truly want, even though I'm locked in and convicted on where I'm going, and I can see it, and I can feel it, and I can touch it, and I can taste it, and I can smell it, and I'm going there. But at the end of the day, I come home, and I'm still fucking dealing with... Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how can I be here but here at the same time, I hate the way I feel. Yeah. And I'd imagine there's people inside of, that are watching this, men inside of our, I am a comeback, and women on the outside who watch this thing, maybe they can resonate, maybe they can't, but that's the shoes that I walk in. Yeah. And there's, there's more days, I shouldn't say that, I've had a pretty, been on a pretty good run of like, go, go, you go. You really have. But like, we're, I'm happy, things yeah, are good, we're really doing have. great, like it's been the best, 16, 18 months that I've probably had since we've been running doing it. a long time. But as we're leveling up right now, because I'm crystal clear on what I, what I need to do, there's moves I have to make. Yeah. Like there's moves that I have to make, and I'm not making them. Yeah. And I'm not making them because of love. Yeah. And because I'm not making the move, I'm not loving myself, and I'm not doing what's right for me. And because I'm not doing what's right for me, I'm creating this this thing inside of me that's not good. Yet I want to do it for everybody, but here I sit inside of it, going letting these things fester up, fester up, fester up, and then move, and then we explode and expand, and that's the evolution that we're going to be on. But Because we've been in this position, I don't know, a solid, uncomfortable three or four times now in our six years together where I I know now, and now you also know now where we're at a spot and when everything is kind of the snowball effect, like you said, of one, one thing after another, it's just, okay, we know this is how it goes. We know that. And maybe, you know, sitting here talking, and I've said this before, but this is probably just life. Maybe. And life for us. Life for us. Okay, so we were sitting outside of Yogi's about to get ice cream last night, which, by the way, we decided not to get ice cream, which is a big win. I went for a 30-minute walk after, and you got ready for bed. Talk to your sister about Hawaii. But you, you said something to me. You're like, we live in a town where people come to vacation, but we don't do the things that they do. Mm-hmm. But we do. Yeah. You couldn't see them. Mm-hmm. Because you've grown so much, you didn't even notice where you're at. Like the ceiling that we're at is so much higher than the people that we hang around with. Or, or shouldn't say that, just the people that were telling you this thing. Yeah. Not, not to be better, but just like the things we do, the place we go, and like, I've, when you ask the world for this type of life and you operate from this type of life, you're going to have a lot more bumps, a lot more bruises, a lot more cuts, and there's going to be some falls. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even close to where I'm wanting to be, but that's what I'm saying. Like inside of the way that I feel, do I just need to accept that this is the rest of my life? I mean, with the pattern of us being together thus far, I would say probably. Because I know you and I know me and you're going to be on this continua- continuation of growth and more and and developing whatever that looks like in whatever areas. And so probably to some degree, things are always going to, you know, as we evolve. Um, I had another I had another feeling the other day too because <clears throat> like we're not winning right now. Right. Like just not. We're winning. In life. We're winning. Everyone around us is winning. We're, we're healthy. 
Yes. Everyone's got food on the table. Like, of course. At life, we are absolutely killing it. Crushing it. Crushing it. The way that I need to win, I, the way they need things to work right now, we're not winning the way that it needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And that causes me so much freaking like. I don't, I don't know where to put the word. I won't quit, but in, and I'm not paralyzed, but I'm in a place of just what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. Even though I know the moves I need to make, right? Yeah. And I can't, I can't express it on this camera or even to you or even to Kevin, but it's like there's this, this force field over me right now that is so heavy or like a cloak <laughs> mm -hmm. that if I could remove this cloak and I could reveal more of who I am, I could have more of what I'm supposed to be knowing it's over here. And I, for some reason, can't shake it right now. Yeah. That's interesting. Or I can't grasp it. I can't fix it because things aren't going the way that I want them to go. But then I also recognize that not every season is going to be a winning season. Right. Or, or look like it's supposed to look. So then I tell myself, in this way that I feel right now, is this just what winning looks like? And, is, is it a mindset? And we've also had conversations of, as you just said, you know, you want to remove this cloak and you're like ready to go. We kind of got into this place in our life because you're a massive control freak when it comes to everything in the business. And just like you said, you want things to go this way and this way and this way, and you want people to do it now. And when that doesn't happen, you're like, what the f am I even doing then? But it's never happened but I've been chasing it. This is the, this is well, the right. point, right? Like, right. I, it's never happened. So Kevin and I have done some amazing stuff together since 2015, 16, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no kidding. And even though I'm a control freak, never once have been able to get it to go the way I needed to go. Well, that's, and that, we, that's what I was going to say, just kind of using that as, a, as some context is we got to a spot in our life where we're doing what we need to do. We're getting clarity. We're never going to stop working. We're never going to stop growing. We kind of have gotten to this agreement that we're on God's time for sure. Sure. That when he sees fit, we're ready for it. We will have it. And I can't, I, I, I don't. Uh, what did I text you this morning? Or do you remember? Yeah, we're at a, we're not at a red light. We're at a yellow light. At a yellow light. God, God just I said, said I'm just waiting for God to give me the green light because uh, <laughs> I'm ready. Just not right now. Just not right now. Proceed with caution. Yellow light. Slow down. Slow down. What, what does Bailey tell me? Yellow light, yellow, yellow yellow light, light means go, go faster. faster. <laughs> <laughs> so... I think she's confused a little bit on that. Anyways, I I don't know if there's a purpose behind this topic today, but I think it's good for people to see that like you can take from your from my life, from our life, the experiences, whether it's creating the first business, whether it's a relationship that you're feeling the struggle in, whether it's walking back into God, whether it's losing weight, whether it is building a business mm -hmm. or scaling a business far greater than mine, the pressure is the pressure and it's equivalent to the pressure you're willing to put on yourself. And like Every day to do something significant inside of this life, you've got to just you've got to keep going. Like I don't, I'm kind of at a loss for words, only because there's a feeling that like I, I don't want to talk anymore. Yeah, I just want to go. Yeah, I just want it to go away, and the only way to make things go away are for me to do. And if I can't do, then I'm stuck, and I will refuse to be stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So for anybody that is continuously pursuing. Greater, better, stronger, more, whatever whatever word that you want to use. Basically, just know, as far as Mark and I are concerned, that it doesn't really get easier. You know, life is wonderful. And, and again, we're, this, is, this is coming from a spot of just being vulnerable and sharing our open experience with you guys. Our life is amazing. At the end of the day, we have each other. We have health. We have love. All the things that truly, truly matter. Um... But when you are trying to elevate your life in such ways, yeah. I think the takeaway, if someone listened all the way to the end, is you have to ask yourself, why are you elevating? Right. And if you're not crystal clear on why you're doing it, then like you need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. I, I know why, because it's larger than just a want. It's a calling and it's a feeling that I can't shut off and I'm obsessed with where I'm going. And, and me the, being your wife, I take on that responsibility to help you pursue and to help push and to get our family there as well. So that's it for this week's episode. We'll see you guys next week. Good job.